This is Duke University. So bank runs have been important, so historically and currently. So when we think of bank runs, we normally think of long queues of customers standing outside a bank, and we associate this with the Great Depression. That's changed, unfortunately. Um, in recent times, we've seen plenty of bank runs. So in the US, you know, uh, Countrywide and IndyMac, in the UK, Northern Rock, uh, in India, ICICI Bank. And so bank runs have become a very topical issue, right? And, and one of the things that's important to understand is what are the factors that propel a bank run? So what's intriguing about bank runs is even a very healthy bank can face a bank run if people think that other people are going to run. In this paper, we try to figure out what are the factors that induce depositors to run and what are the factors that sort of hold them back. And so we got data from a bank which faced a run. Now this bank itself was perfectly healthy, but its neighboring bank faced a run. And so for three days, there was a major run on this bank too. And we have minute by minute sort of withdrawal data from this bank. And so we can try and figure out what are the factors that actually propel depositors to run or hold them back. And so if you were to just plot on Google Earth the depositors who run in relationship to where the bank is, you actually see some interesting patterns. So in the picture, the round dots represent households who run. And what you can see is that in a single apartment, there are often three households that run. But in the neighboring apartment building, there's nobody that runs. So this suggests that there are systematic factors affecting bank runs. The question is, what are they? And so the way we tr study this is we examine what we call a contagion effect of a bank run in a way very similar to the way the epidemiologists sort of study how do infectious diseases spread and they compute transmission probabilities. So we do the same in the bank run setting and asking, you know, if someone in my social network runs, am I more likely to get infected in, in the sense of also going to the bank and running? And we find social networks are indeed important, but perhaps even more important are what are the factors that hold you back from running? And we find deposit insurance matters, and so that's good news. We would hope deposit insurance does stop people from running. It does, but it's only partially effective. The other factors we find that are important in holding depositors back from running are the length and the depth of their relationship with the bank. So the longer they've been with the bank, the less likely they are to run. And the more contact they have with the bank, right? In, in, in this case, if you've ever taken a loan out with the bank, either in the past or currently, you're less likely to run, right? And so there's something about the relationship or the connectedness of the depositor with the bank that sort of stops people from running, even if there are other people in your social network running. Right. Then finally, one of the questions we ask is, are there long-term costs of a healthy bank facing a run, even if the bank survives? Now, this is important from a regulatory perspective, because if a bank faces a run, and you figure it is going to survive, and that is certainly the case in this bank, right? So it faces runs for three days, there's no intervention, and it survives. So what are the costs, or are there any costs to this? Should the government intervene when the bank is likely to survive anyway? And so when we look at this bank, we measure who are the depositors who run, do they ever come back to the bank? And the answer is no, they don't. So there are long-term costs of a bank run.